Let's take a peek inside this three digit by three digit addition and subtraction intervention. If you're familiar with my other interventions, you know that every day, day in and day out, the left hand side of my interventions are always the same. Always, always, always. The skill might change. Maybe instead of addition, we're working on subtraction, or maybe it's with regrouping or without regrouping, but this side of the page really begins the same every single day. And so early on in the year, it might be very guided. It might be a lot of them copying what I'm doing. Maybe I'm asking questions like, okay, what's four plus three? And they use their hundreds chart to solve that. Oh, what's three plus four? What's seven plus two? Use your hundreds chart or use your number line, use your touch points. Whatever strategy you teach your students to use, this is kind of where that comes in. Sometimes I usually set a timer on my phone for about 10 minutes and we get through as much as we can in 10 minutes. And you know what? If that's only five problems, that's okay. If that's seven of the eight problems, that's okay. If we get all eight problems done, that's fine too. And a lot of times that kind of varies depending on the time of the year. And if we're just beginning addition with regrouping or if we're just beginning subtraction with regrouping, or is it more of a review? So don't hold yourself to, oh my gosh, we have to get through all eight problems. I set a timer. We do as many as we can in that time. Now on the left hand side of the page, on the right hand side of the page, I'm sorry, on the right hand side of the page, then we have other skills that I think are very important for our students to practice, but again, take some time and some explaining. So usually after that 10 minutes on this side, we spend about five minutes on this side of the page. Again, early on, we don't get through all these things and that's okay, get through as much as you can. In time, these skills are very quick and easy and can easily be completed in five minutes or so. So we start with a word problem every day because I think that's important for our students to practice. We also have a graph and I'm gonna run through the whole week of the graphs just to kind of show you what that looks like. So the graph stays the same every single day of this week, except the question changes. That's the only difference. And then when you go into week two, you'll have a different graph, which might be, you know, vertical, a vertical bar graph, a horizontal bar graph, a pictograph, a line plot. You might have lots of different things. This just kind of changes depending on the week, but the graph itself will stay the same every single day and the question will change. Which day had the most votes? This is your favorite day of the week. Which day had the least votes? How many students voted all together? How many more students voted for Saturday than Sunday? And on Friday, how many students voted for Friday and Sunday. So here students would have to add, where on day four they would have to subtract. And so again, those questions stay the same every single week. So that you're always kind of practicing. Okay, let's read it and see who had the most, who had the least. Ooh, all together, we've got to add up all these votes. And early on, this is difficult because even, I'm not sure how well you'll be able to see it on the camera, these, this axis counts by twos. So we have zero, two, four, six, eight, ten. And so if we have a number in the middle of those, we have to figure out, oh, it's actually 13, even though the lot, you know, because even though that number isn't there. And so that takes practice. But again, I think those are easy questions that students can answer on universal screeners. We also work on telling time, shading fraction models, rounding, counting money, and multiples of two, five, and 10, because I think I would love for them to be able to count by sixes and sevens and eights, but let's get some of the basics. And then when possible, those also tie into counting money. So for example, if we're counting nickels over here, then right here we'll be counting by fives. If we're counting dimes over here, then over here we're going to be counting by tens, just so they it's fresh in their mind and then can transfer it over here. Now, this is day one, so this is an odd page, which will look the same all throughout the, the series. So day one, three, and five will always look the same. Day two will look just a little bit different. Not much about it has changed except for um, this section here. So with that, we'll start with a word problem. Again, we've already discussed our graph. We'll work on telling time, but now we're also gonna work on a little bit of place value. 
where we show this number in base 10 blocks, hundreds, tens, and ones, and then expanded form. Again, we'll work on rounding, multiples of five, and counting numbers. When we switch back here, we're gonna go back to fractions, and so it's an odd day. That little bit is going to change. Even day, we'll go back to representing numbers and back to fraction models. So every single day really looks very, very similar. And in time, your students will be able to do a lot of that on their own. Now, you might be saying, okay, well that didn't have regrouping. My students might be ready for regrouping. Or what if they don't need all of these weeks of addition and subtraction and back to addition and back to subtraction? You can skip around and within the first couple of pages of the file on TPT, you'll be able to see this little sequence so that you can start to see, okay, well, where do I wanna start my students? I like to switch back and forth that way, they've had a few weeks of addition without regrouping, then subtraction, but you and I both know then they kind of fall apart as if they've never seen addition or they've never seen subtraction when you come back to it. So I like to kind of switch back and forth, depending on if they're at this without regrouping level or with regrouping. I think that switch back and forth um, is a good idea. Now, I've also printed off some other pages so that you can see what some of these look like. So in this book that I have shown you in the video, they all had addition without regrouping. So here's some subtraction without regrouping. Then we go to mixed addition and subtraction without regrouping. Then addition with regrouping. Again, that starts at week 16. So depending on what your students need will depend on if you wanna start at week one or start at week 16. Week 19 then goes to subtraction with regrouping. And at week 29, then it's the mixed addition and subtraction with regrouping. And I think it's important to do this mixed um, look again, because sometimes kids, it's like they've never seen addition once you practice subtraction for a few weeks. So I like to practice these interchangeably. However, this is a harder skill. So if your kids aren't ready for this, then go back to week 16 and kind of run through it again. Or at least that's what I do because I have had students who they're just not ready. But then I have had students where it's like, man, they're kicking butt at this and kicking butt at that. Let's throw them together and see if they can practice checking. Are we adding or checking? Are we subtraction subtracting before we start? That way they know how are they using their hundreds chart? Are they counting forward? Are they counting backwards? things like that. So I hope you enjoy this intervention. It has really helped my students make significant progress with addition and subtraction, both with and without regrouping.